Today we're on Broadwick Street in Soho, formerly Broad Street. I'm here to talk about one of my favourite figures in the history of medicine. I realise it's exceptionally nerdy to have a favourite figure in the history of medicine, but that's the channel you're on. The doctor in question is John Snow. John Snow was a Victorian doctor based on Frith Street a short walk from here. He's famous for many reasons. Firstly, he was a pioneer in the science of anaesthetics. In fact, he was anaesthetist to Queen Victoria when she gave birth to her children, Leopold and Beatrice. Legend has it that one patient was so pleased with Snow's work when she was giving birth that she named her daughter Anesthesia. If Snow had only done this, he'd be a significant medical pioneer. But I've come here to discuss his other great achievement. You see, around the middle of the 19th century, there was a major cholera pandemic, with outbreaks of the disease occurring all over the world. Cholera is an infection of the small intestine that causes severe diarrhoea and vomiting that leads to dehydration, potential kidney failure, and, if not treated, it can be fatal. A victim could be fine at breakfast time and dead by the evening. What made it all the more frightening in the mid-19th century was that no one really knew where it came from. The germ theory of disease was yet to be fully developed. The most common theory was that of miasma. This was basically that disease came from foul air arising from decaying matter that was breathed in by the victims. It apparently made a lot of sense, after all. Wasn't it the case that the communities worst hit by disease were the poorest and filthiest? Dr Snow wasn't so sure. In 1848 and 1849, a major outbreak in Britain had given him an opportunity to study cholera in the field. The miasma theory didn't add up to him. He came across plenty of cases among people living in squalor, but also among the wealthy and those in rural areas, as had been the case in an 1847 outbreak in Exeter. In 1849, Snow published an essay advancing a new theory. What if the disease was transmitted through contaminated water? The theory was considered eccentric. Few took it seriously. Many considered it downright unpleasant. No one likes the idea of drinking raw sewage, even people who enjoy cause light. But a few years later, Snow was to get the perfect opportunity to put his hypothesis to the test. 1854 saw another outbreak. Starting in Russia, spreading to Asia, America and Western Europe, it reached Soho at the end of August. Snow described it as the most terrible outbreak of cholera which has ever occurred in this kingdom. 127 people living in the area died in the first three days, and by the end of the outbreak, 616 would have perished. Three quarters of the local population fled in terror. Nevertheless, Snow saw this as a useful opportunity to test his theory. At this time, Soho was a largely poor area with a lot of rather anti-social industries, slaughterhouses, tanners and the like. Crucially though, it wasn't connected to any of the major London water suppliers or the sewer system, both of which covered a fraction of the area they serve today. Water was drawn from wells and um, human waste went into cesspits. If Snow's theory was correct, it should theoretically have been possible to find the source of contamination and so arrest the progress of the epidemic in the neighbourhood. With the help of a local priest, Reverend Henry Whitehead, Snow interviewed the families of victims. He plotted the individual cases on a map. There were a number of anomalies. While the disease could affect entire families, some men never caught the disease. One outlier was a woman in Hampstead who hadn't lived in the area for years. So much for foul air. Snow's investigations quickly answered these questions. The men worked at the Lion Brewery, which gave its workers an allowance of beer. 
The woman had Soho water delivered to her by a relative, as she preferred the taste to her local supply. Snow's detective work determined the source of the outbreak. It seemed that everyone afflicted by the disease took their water from the Broad Street pump. This had been contaminated when faecal matter from a baby who had died of the disease had leaked from a cesspit into the well that supplied the pump. Snow presented his findings to the Board of Guardians of St. James's Parish, who removed the pump handle. And that should have been it. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Even after Snow's exhaustive work, which included this and several other studies of water quality in the city, many were unconvinced of the waterborne disease idea. What didn't help was that so many of the population had left Soho, meaning that the outbreak was already dying down by the time the pump was decommissioned. In fact, shortly after the outbreak died down, the pump handle was reattached. It was only later in the century that Snow's work started to be taken really seriously. An 1866 outbreak in Bromley-by-Bow led William Farr, an opponent of Snow's theory, to re-examine the idea. The same year, Dr Edwin Lancaster was able to persuade the parish council to scrap the Broad Street pump for good. Thanks to the work of Louis Pasteur, Robert Koch and others, by the dawn of the 20th century the miasma theory would fall completely out of favour and Snow would be vindicated. These days he's recognised as a pioneer of epidemiology. Not only that, but his struggle to get his work accepted has become emblematic of the struggle many scientific pioneers encounter in the face of orthodoxy. It seems, all things considered, that John Snow knew an awful lot.